And we're back with a quick tutorial on oxygen not included. And today we're going to be tackling power. Now, I remember power when I first started was extremely complicated to get into because it has so many quirks to it that it's just ridiculous. Once you get used to them though, they all become second nature. We'll start off with the very basic, most basic power you're going to start with, and that is the manual generator. You're going to get a manual generator, you'll hook it up to a smaller battery and later on to a jumbo battery. That's it. This dial here, it just says when the battery hits that level, that's when a duplicate will be called to come back. So once the battery hits 25% charge, only then will the duplicate be called back to charge it, and then once the battery's at 100%, the duplicate will stop. That's all that means. Next up, we want to cover upgrading to a coal generator or upgrading to a wood burner. Well, uh, I don't know if wood burners, are an up wood burners are an upgrade, to be honest. For coal generators, they have a, a quirk. Once this hits its threshold, it'll start at 50% by automatically, but you should set it to 5. Once it hits that threshold of power, and by that threshold of power, I mean there's 5% battery charge on the whole network. That is an average of all the batteries connected across your entire grid, regardless of location, so long as there's a continuous wire going from the coal generator to them. As long as all of them hit 5%, the coal generator will request more coal. Unfortunately, though, once it has that coal, it will burn it all. It, 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 won't, it won't bother to be nice with it or stop once all the batteries in the network are full. It will just keep burning it, even if all the batteries in the network are full and there's no reason to burn. It will just do it until it's all gone. But once it's all gone, once all the coal is burnt off, you won't request any more coal until the battery level goes back to 5%. One full load of coal in a coal generator will charge seven and a half jumbo batteries. However, it takes about 500 seconds to do that. During those 500 seconds, you should be able to consume at least a bit of that power. And at the same time, these batteries do produce heat. So five batteries is about the good balance between storing as much power as is generated, but not leaving yourself so many batteries lying around that you generate an enormous amount of heat. Uh, jumbo batteries produce 1.25 kilodTUs of heat. Co coal generators generate 9, so it's just a nice balance where you're generating about mm, 6 kilodTUs of heat with this, well, a little bit over, and this would have produced 9 if you hadn't put up, up any batteries to it at all. At the same time, you want to really minimize the, the uptime on the coal generator because it does produce carbon dioxide and in huge quantities in comparison to your duplicates. This will be your biggest source of carbon dioxide in your early base if you're not careful. Uh, this has killed many, many bases Wood burners, very similar, but much weaker. They produce tiny amounts of power in comparison. 300, I think it's 300 watts on these. They're terrible. But hook up a few batteries and you should be safe. Three batteries is usually fine per for a wood burner. An early game, you are not going to want more than one coal generator or usually one wood burner because you won't be you won't be burning that much power. Your power needs will be minuscule. Once, though, you get your hands on refined metals and get your research into smart batteries, things open up quite a bit. You place one smart battery down and you run an automation wire from the smart battery to the generators. Now normally I place the smart battery in between the two generators simply because it cuts down on the distance the wire has to travel. That's really it. You could place it on one side or the other. You could keep it on another floor if you really wanted, but you will have to pay refined metal costs to run the automation wire the whole distance. Set your generator thresholds here to about 9060. It's normally set to 100 zero. That's bad. That means hmm, when this hits 60% with the way I've set it now, once the battery level in here is at 60%, it will send an on signal to the coal generators telling them to turn on. Once the battery power is at 90%, it will tell the coal generators to turn off. The reason for the 90% shut off is there's a, well, I haven't tested this in a long time, but it used to be when coal generators or any generator was in mid animation, it would finish its animation even if there was enough power in the batteries. So this could result in power wastage, just a, a tiny amount, but you know, it's all about percentages here. So by putting it at 60, 90, you don't waste any power, you don't waste any fuel just a good standard to have. The reason you don't want it at zero is that means if it will wait until the battery is completely empty before the coal generators kick in and you normally get these little sputters in the network. It's very, very annoying. So far, this entire power is all being run off just a single one kilowatt wire. Just raw wire made out of ore going up to all your different devices. If you'll check here and you look at it, you can see that it has the potential load or the potential power consumed of 1400 watts, which means if everything on this network draws power at the same time, well, we could have a problem. We don't want that. Potential power consumes 1.4 kilowatts. So if everything turns on, it's, just, it's highly unlikely, but if it does happen, we'll get breaks in the wire. So to avoid that, allow me to introduce you to the power transformer. Now, what all of these, what, what this does is power comes in this direction, and then it's sort of metered out the other side. These ones are very special because they only output one kilowatt of power. Meaning, now there's some exceptions here, but meaning you should be able to run a one kilowatt wire out of this, and even if all the machines start drawing too much power, all that will happen is that some of the machines will get brownouts and won't work correctly. But at the same time, your wires won't overload and you won't have busted wires around the place, which is usually far more valuable because you don't need to repair those or do anything with them. 
machine brines out for a few seconds, that's fine. Wires break, you got to go repair those. Or even worse, wires go so bad they actually completely break and things get cut off. Now, this is the basic power transformer and it's the first one you'd use and it's very handy. However, there is an upgraded one and it doesn't work at all like you would think it would do. So this is the second one. This one here works at 4 kilowatts. Yes, that sounds... Yes, ridiculous, and it is. What that means is there's nothing that will really work with it. You have two choices of wire. You've got your basic wire. This handles one kilowatt loads, and then you have your conductive wire, which handles two kilowatt loads. However, this thing handles four kilowatts. So, yes, if you try and overload a two kilowatt wire coming out of this, it will overload and happily break. These transformers are more for allowing you to break off of a main power spine. We'll cover a bit on that in a minute. But the main reason you want these power transformers is they allow you to meter this out, protect your line, and in the early game when you're just running intermittently a lot of uh, random machines, and you could have a two kilowatt draw, potential two kilowatt power draw on the line. But realistically, you're only going to you know be drawing far less than that most of the time. This just helps you prevent overloads and keep your base nice and safe. To demonstrate this transformer in action, I have introduced a lot of fridges. This will put us well over the two kilowatt draw. We've now got a potential power draw of 3.9 well, 3 kilowatts. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on. And you notice most of these are now, they've still got the battery symbol. What that means is they're not active. They're, uh, they don't have enough power. So several of them are turning on and they are actively drawing power and doing their thing. But most of them can't. They literally can't because there's just not enough power on the grid. However, nothing's breaking. We're not getting any broken wires, no problems like that. So let me do a quick modification here. What I have done here is I have placed two batteries on the opposite side of the transformer. And this catches out a lot of people. Now that these batteries are on the opposite side of the transformer, we'll hook back up these fridges again. And then we're going to see what happens. You see, now that these batteries are on the opposite side of the transformer, there's no flow control. Batteries will give out as much power as they can. They, there's no limit to it. They'll just keep dumping power out happily, happy as Larry. However, they won't, and they can also accept power. Oh, there we go. We've got a circuit overloaded. Where is it? Yeah, over here. Overloaded again, overloaded again. This is one of the other random things about it as well. When you get an overload on a circuit, it can be anywhere on the grid. It doesn't really make a difference. There could be, it could be on a dead end line where there's no power draw. It really makes no difference. It just picks a random tile and starts overloading. If you repair it, it will stop overloading that section and it will switch to somewhere else. Do not place batteries on the far side of a transformer. There are rare instances where it's necessary, but by and large, it's a, as a good rule of thumb, don't place batteries on the far side of a transformer. All the batteries should be on the, on the opposite side of the transformer. This here is a very low power base. It's still very early in the game, 122 cycles, 21 cycles in. There's no heavy metal refinement or anything going on. And this whole thing is running on conductive wire because lots of lead was acquired from lead biomes or uh, oil biomes. So this whole base is uh, slightly different from standard, but you will have a lot of opportunity to make bases like this in your playthroughs. This one here, all we've done is we've made sure that none of these wires have more than the two kilowatts potential that these can draw on, and we've just hooked them up to some smart batteries. Done, dusted. Once you have smart batteries, it doesn't really matter how many generators you have, they will only turn on when the smart batteries tell them to, meaning you can run as many as you like. As it gets into the later game and your power needs sort of start to mature, you'll still want to keep most of your main base on usually a small enough grid. The reason being all the heat producing machines, you don't want them anywhere near your core base because that's usually where your crops and your duplicates live and that's usually bad. Now I've just put down a sample of most of the power buildings you'll find here. One of the things you'll notice is hydrogen generators are usually only used for your electrolyzers. Steam turbines have niche uses usually for taming volcanoes or some geothermal power and anything to do with heat deletion. But the main power suppliers are petroleum, natural gas and coal. All of these produce carbon dioxide, all three of them. And these two here, the natural gas and the petroleum generators, produce water. And this is where you're going to have to make your decision about your power grid. What some people would like to do is, as their power needs to grow, they will throw down a couple of generators beside whatever needs it, hook it up to that grid, and then they will run it off that. And they will set up a smattering of smaller grids all over the map. And then as the game progresses, they will start connecting them together with heavy watt wire. Uh, this heavy watt wire here, or heavy watt conductive wire. One or the other. Usually heavy watt wire is cheaper because it can be made out of raw metal. Whereas it takes refined metal to make heavy watt, heavy uh, watt conductive wire. So, my preference though is to place all of them in all of the carbon dioxide producers in one spot. It just makes dealing with their waste products much easier rather than having multiple setups around the map. But if you want to do it with the spread out method, you can totally do that as well. But I'm just going to cover here. Say this is a normal power grid. Here you've got your petroleum, which is your main power, natural gas, which is backup power, and then coal, which is backup, backup, backup power. 
and all three of them are kept inside the same room because that way all the carbon dioxide they produce can be dealt with in one spot. But power-wise, how are we working this all? Oh, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. All of this is just heavy wet wire. Now, currently, if I had to redo all this, I'd admit it with heavy conductive wire. In the recent patch, they changed heavy watt wire. Where is it? Uh, heavy watt wire here does 20 kilowatts. It has a max power of 20 kilowatts, but heavy conductive wire has 50 kilowatts. So, by and large, I would switch everything to heavy uh, heavy watt conductive wire. As well as that oil, the oil biome now comes with lead, and lead is classified as a refined metal, so you can make all of your power span out of it. Well, anything that's not heat sensitive. But you still also have two methods. One is you can still run that heavy watt wire around to the machines that need it and power them directly, or you can start making well, what I like to call plug sockets. Say something like this over here. This is an out of date one because these warts have been heavily nerfed. They used to be four times as powerful. But something like this, you run your heavy conductive wire through here and then you branch off two kilowatt wires out of it. This allows you to branch off the power to different sections of the map. It depends what way you're going for and why is that red? You know what? No, it's not a problem. This allows you to just uh, branch off where you want two kilowatt power wires and those two kilowatt power wires can provide you with power. That's why they're called plug sockets. Or you can run the spine directly up through your base and just break off transformers wherever you need them. In this instance, this one's actually running straight up through the transit tube axis to provide power to those because they are quite power hungry and running transformers off to all of them is usually painful. A few things to note, even though this is a much larger base than the, the starting one, all of the batteries, they are all contained on the opposite side of the transformers. So what you do is you run, well, this is battery box here. It's stored on the main grid, and then normally what you do is you just hook up, uh, say, well, okay, we've got our battery socket over here. You hook up your um, your power transformers right there, and then the power transformers feed off onto and feed off down to your different pieces of equipment. This just simplifies the power distribution grid. You can, of course, run the heavy watt wires to places, but they come with a massive decor penalty. And let's run the decor overlay for a moment. Now you'll see here, in here, it is just horrendous, and that's usually bad. You don't want that around your base or pl places that your dupes are going to be spending large quantities of time. This place in here is effectively maintenance-free, so the only thing that's going to be coming in here is they will be replacing the coal in these bins if these coal generators turn on. Those coal generators should never turn on. You'll see here there's just uh, three, these three batteries have been picked to control the grid, and they're just set to different times. So one's 65.50, one's 50.35, and one's 35.20. The reason they're set uh, so low at 65% is there's some geothermal power going on on the map, and it's nice to have uh, some space for that on the grid so they can be absorbed. Oh, but yeah, you do not want these wires going anywhere near where you're duping so you're spending large quantities of time. In this instance here, there's a, an actual decor floor that's overpowering the... It's just about cancelling out the negative decor and getting about 80. You know, it makes it mildly acceptable for duplicates to survive in here, which is kind of ridiculous. Sorry, okay, survival is a, a bit rough. It just makes sure that their, their decor levels don't go too low. That's your biggest downside of using heavy watt wire. However, if you're using, where is it, heavy watt conductive wire, heavy watt conductive wire is what's used in this base anyway, mostly all outside the base. The reason being it, can be, it has half the decor penalty and can be overpowered with just a few strategically well-placed statues. This just helps counteract all the negatives you're going to get from that stuff. There's swings and randomites to everything. My advice, though, would be switch your entire grid to heavy conductive wire. If you're planning on making a really, really large base, you would probably want to switch your entire uh, grid to heavy watt conductive wire. If you're going to be staying smaller and 20 kilowatts will suit you, then fine, you can leave it as a heavy watt wire. Though, good thing to note, if you tell your duplicates to overwrite heavy watt wire with he or uh, heavy watt wire with heavy watt conductive wire, they will happily do so, and you can replace the wires while they're still active, and it won't cause an interruption in power flow, as far as I'm aware. So you can overwrite the wires with the, the more advanced ones later on, just if you don't have the materials at the time to do it. One downside to using transformers to break off power everywhere is, well, they do produce heat, so you're going to need to provide usually a cooling source nearby to just make sure that they stay stable, unless you're running a hot base, or unless you don't mind investing in a lot of steel. You can make them out of steel, and then you usually don't care because they'll, you, they don't will they do overheat until 275C. It's, it's unlikely any area will get that hot. Well, depending on how you run your map, of course. Let's have a quick look at an alternative style of dealing with your power grid, and that's making a hot room for them, or a, a power sauna. All you're doing here is all the heat generated by the natural gas generators and petroleum generators. Instead of cooling them down like in the previous version, you let them overheat. This way, all their heat can be converted and turned, fed into steam turbines to generate even more power for your base. It's... 
I will not say it is a very good idea. Uh, the reason being, it takes an awful lot of time and effort to get it done, and usually it's time and effort you could probably be better spent doing other things. However, it is ridiculously cool, so you'll probably want to try it at some point if you played the game long enough. It is a lot of fun. Uh, that's just to deal with all the heat, and as well as that, it gives you a giant room to run Transformers out of, meaning you can run uh, oh, horrible sorts of spaghetti all over the place, yes. I never claim to have a great clean grid, but this is a, another example of using Transformers to just run wires to ridiculous things doing ridiculous stuff. I'm not even sure where half of those go anymore. But when you're dealing with power, a good idea is to come up with at least a standard for yourself. In this map, for example, my standard was I was going to run a power spine down the left side of the map, and then off that power spine I would run the Transformers. This just meant, okay, it did give me some problems where I had to run wires huge lengths just to get to things, but it did mean I had a standard to work with and it just made getting things done simpler. Well, I knew what I had to do. The moment I needed power somewhere, all I had to do was look at where my power spine was, do a little bit of mental arithmetic and go, yes, I should have really made that power spine in the middle of the map. My advice would be if you have the gold, make the power spine in the middle of the map, which brings us neatly to the materials you should make the wires out of. This glowing monstrosity is heavy watt wire made out of aluminum. It has a minus 325 decor penalty because it's in range of, you're in range of 13 chunks of the wire. It has a decor negative that reaches up to six tiles. It is nasty. It is really, really nasty. You could make it out of copper and decrease that slightly, or you could make it out of gold uh, uh, amalgam and decrease it slightly, but honestly, the decrease is so tiny, it's not worth the effort. Make, make heavy watt wire whatever is your cheapest, most abundant metal. This here is a heavy, heavy watt conductive wire made out of aluminum. It's minus 180, which is quite a lot less of a problem. It's still nasty, but it's a lot less of a problem. However, if you make that same wire out of gold, it's minus 90. If you get a chance and you have a map with a lot of gold, it's always a good idea to consider making your heavy watt, heavy conductive wire, heavy watt conductive wire spine out of gold. It makes it much easier to deal with the decor and malice, and it's just generally easier. This here is conductive wire. This stuff right here, the stuff that's the two kilowatt wire you'll be using everywhere around your base. This one is made of lead. As you can see, total decor zero. This one is made of gold, total decor zero. It does not matter what you make the wire out of. Make it out of any material you want, the most common one you have. The only thing you need to consider is the melting point. That's it. Conductive wire, make it out of anything. Uh, then you've got your basic wire. This does have a, a decor malice, but it's kind of tiny and you don't really have much choice at the start of what you're going to make it out of. It's either going to be copper or aluminum. You don't have a choice, so just go with it. Now, for one last thing to try, what will happen if we get a conductive wire and we hooked that conductive wire and we built it into our power grid over here. Oh, one second, the game seems to be frozen. Ah, yes. So if we built a conductive wire and attached it on to that heavy watt wire, what would our game do? Well, oh, yeah, circuit's overloading. It doesn't like that at all. Don't mix and match wires. So, yeah, let's just hook those up like that and see what happens. Moral of the story, keep like with like. All the same type of what, what wires in wherever they are. If you try and mix and match, then the moment it goes over the, the power capacity of the weakest wire, that weakest wire will break. And don't think that mm, you'll feel this urge that, wait a minute, it shouldn't damage the wires if I have my power in a different area, for example. Up here, we've installed a little fridge, and that fridge only draws 120 watts. So theoretically, when we plug this in, you know, you think your brain is telling you, well, this, this is only going to be drawing enough power to feed that. And since it's only drawing that much power, it shouldn't damage the wire. Unfortunately, no, it immediately overloads the wire. The reason being, the moment anything is connected to a grid, even if there's nothing else drawing power on it, it just instantly overloads it. Don't mix and match wires. One last thing that may occur to you is you may be worried, well, what happens if I have so many generators on there that I'm producing more than the 50 kilowatts my heavy watt wire can support, and I start dumping that all into batteries, will it not overload the wire? No. There is another nice little quirk in this game where it doesn't matter, you could generate a a thousand kilowatts of power and have it all hooked up to a giant battery bank and the batteries will absorb all the power across that grid without damaging the wires. Batteries can absorb as much power as they want without damaging the grid. It's only consumers. Power consumers, as in buildings that consume power, they're the only thing that can cause damage to the grid. However, when it comes to outputting power, they can, as we've covered before. One final thing you might see floating around is people hooking up two small transformers to a heavy watt wire and then running a two kilowatt wire out of it. What they're doing here is they're basically jury rigging a half large transformer that won't allow a heavy conductive wire to or a conductive wire to overload. You're metering this out so that this can only put out two kilowatts which means even though we've got well a lot of fridges here that can support over 2.4 kilowatts all of most of the fridges will get power but some of them won't on the grounds that 
we're not going to overload the wire. These transformers just will not allow it. This just allows you to run, well, run overload a wire and be confident that you're not going to, well, overload the wire, so long as everything's not functioning on it at all times, which is usually the case. If you were to try to do the same setup with a large power transformer, then what should happen is the wire should start to immediately overload. Yeah, there we go. The wire can't handle it. That is just one minor little quirk you'll see occasionally showing up. However, the reason it's not used as frequently is in most instances having a 2 kilowatt wire line is usually sufficient for most of your needs and running a second one is usually not that painful. Uh, another thing as well, when you use large power transformers and basic power transformers, well, last I checked, but let's double check this now, they produce the exact same amount of heat. So it's one kilo, D, one kilo DTU and this one, yeah, one kilo DTU. So what you can do is use two small power transformers, produce twice as much heat, which you will have to deal with more than likely, and run a two kilowatt wire that will never overload, or you could to use two large power transformers and then you have the potential to run four kilowatts of power. It really depends on your circumstances. It's one of those niche things, but eh, it's the way the power grid works. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here before I start waffling on some more. I hope this was at least mildly informative of you and helps you with your power grids. And uh, good luck.